Boji was the son of the strongest king but turned out to be weak and pathetic. People tried to get him assassinated but he survives and trains to unlock his secret powers of knocking anyone out at will to become the strongest king after his dad dies. Our story starts with Prince Boji who is born to giant parents but is still the smallest person to ever walk the kingdom of boss. He is a cheap imitation of Helen Keller as he is weak, deaf and naive but still holds the biggest courage to walk with his head held high. His day goes about running around the field and playing with the animals that roam the land of his father. Because of his handicaps, Boji doesn't play with other children his age and younger because there may be misunderstandings between the two parties and Boji is usually a victim to the people's ridicule. While going about his day, he meets a shadow creature called Cage who instantly holds him at knife point in an attempt to steal his clothes. Boji, after first struggling to understand Cage, reads his lips and start to carry out the orders given to him by Cage. Cage tells him to take off his clothes and to do it tomorrow at the same spot when Boji does so, unhesitant. The next day, Boji goes to meet Cage at the spot agreed while wearing more clothes so that Cage can rob him off them. Cage expresses that Boji is a dimwit for nonchalantly doing all that he is told. Boji then tells him that he appreciates his company, and that he only cares for it and the two become friends, meeting with Boji fat in clothes that Cage will take and going home naked. One day, Boji takes Cage home and gets confronted by his stepmother, Queen Hilling who ridicules him even more for always coming back home naked. She asks Boji to get dressed and go see his father. While dressing, Boji cries to himself for all the ridicule he has received for the day, but quickly puts on a brave face and Cage sees him. Cage feels sorry for him and starts to emotionally grow closer to and fonder of him. Boji heads to see his father, King Boss who ranks at the seventh place on the ranking system. The king tells Boji that he must become strong enough to rule his kingdom and orders Damaz to teach him his swordsmanship. Damaz accepts and goes to do just that. While in training, Boji's young half-brother who is bigger and well-developed, Prince Data, appears to challenge Damaz. They spar as Boji admires both Damaz and Data. Damaz loses to Data whose strength he likens to that of King Boss and Boji takes his place to defend him with his own sword. The match is announced in the house and everyone interested comes to watch it play out. Data attacks first but Boji dodges countless times until he is able to counterattack by landing his soft blow on Data's head, impressing everyone watching and in doubt including Cage who cheers him on. Every time Boji dodges and softly counterattacks Data, Data gets mad. Demaz stops them and signs to Boji who stops dodging altogether and gets beat up by Data while he cries mid-match. It continues to get brutal for Boji until Apias, a sword of the king who has been watching from the roof, throws a spear that stops the fight, making Data the winner of the match. Boji sustains wounds from the match and gets bedridden and covered in bandages. He remembers the words Damaz signed to him before he stopped dodging Data's attacks that his way of fighting is not the swordsmanship of a king, and he starts to crawl out of bed to a normal-sized sword and tries to pick it up. He fails to pick it up as he is too small and doesn't have the strength to. He cries his eyes out until Cage throws a coin at him. He turns around to face Cage but wipes his tears away and acts brave so not to embarrass himself to Cage. Cage tells him he has nothing to be ashamed of and that his swordsmanship is uniquely his own. To cut the embarrassment short, Boji shows Cage where his clothes are and Cage tells him that no more will he be taking anything from him because he is on his side from then on. Cage stays by Boji's side while Boji sleeps and when he is about to leave, someone comes into the room. She is shown by the feet and her dress at her ankles that she is a woman and as Cage is about to think she'll do the worst, she puts her hands above the unconscious Boji and they glow a magical green, slowly healing Boji's injuries. Cage leaves knowing that Boji is safe despite his previous suspicions. He meets Bibin, a snake handler and Data's swordsmanship teacher, whom Cage had met when he first went to the castle where Boji lives. Bibin wanted to execute Cage for being a shadow creature belonging to a clan of assassins, but Cage had escaped and now, they meet again. The next day, King Boss dies and his will is read in front of his corpse. They announce the successor of the throne to be the first prince of the kingdom, Prince Boji and this shocks everyone. And after Queen Hilling defies the wishes of her late king and rips apart the will, Prince Data is presented as the new king to the kingdom's people. Boji is hurt by this and runs away to cry his heart out. After confronting Cage again, Babin goes to tell Boji that Cage has left for a journey and they will never see each other again. Boji goes to seek out Cage on his own. He goes to the snake lair where a giant snake he saved when he was younger called Mitsumata lives. Mitsumata tells Boji that his master, Bibin has apprehended Cage but let him go on an important journey that he can't tell Boji. But he also assures him that it is not for the sake of harming him. 
Boji remembers how he was chosen to become king but was opposed as he was weak and frail, and how Cage had promised to be by his side but is now on a journey to help him. Boji sets to follow Cage. He goes to speak with the queen and she refuses him the journey for the same reasons as always. He then decides to run away by climbing out a window from high up in the castle. The queen comes in just time before he lets go of the makeshift rope he put together. Dorsh, the queen's shield, pulls him up but Boji struggles causing the pieces of the ropes to untie and making him fall to the ground. Queen Hilling hurries to Boji and finds him unconscious and starts to groan loudly and glow in a green light, tearing her dress and putting her hands on Boji to heal his wounds. Boji remembers her from the night of the match when she went in and healed him while he slept. While she is left alone to rest, Hilling remembers her first meeting with Boji, and the struggles she had to go through to build the kind of relationship she has with Boji. This makes her a little softer, granting Boji the permission to go on the journey to learn and gain experience and become stronger. She arms him with his teacher, Damaz, and an aide for his personal care, Hokuro. Boji sets off on his journey. The trio first make it to a village where Boji runs from Hokuro to go have fun seeing puppets, buying this and that at the market and sleeping by the fountains. He is later found by Damaz and Hokuro without his bag that had all the important things and Hokuro gets the heat for losing Boji in the first place. The trio then get dinner to calm down and think about a way forward. They commence the journey the next day and find Boji's bag lying on the street. With everything intact, they decide to continue on their journey and walk all the plain valleys and dangerous forests. Boji gets distracted by a butterfly while they're walking and follows it. He falls into a pit guarded by spears and meets the spearman who owns it. The man kills a wild pig and feasts with Boji and they dance together when a creation of new animals happens from the dead one that they're eating. After that, the man explains the process to Boji and decides he wants to sacrifice him for the creation of more new lives from his. Boji manages to escape the man and gets together with his company. They set up camp to rest for the night when, while eating, Boji's meat is stabbed by knives thrown from a distance that the three of them can't detect. In the morning, they see a pack of dogs lying dead on the ground from eating Boji's stabbed meat. It was poisoned. After burying the dogs, they go to another town that has a hole of fire in the ground called the Gates of Hell, a pit into the underworld. Demaz tells Hokuro to find a place for them to rest for the night, and he takes Boji to see the Gates of Hell. When they get there, Demaz pushes Boji into the fire pit and leaves him there for dead. But Boji lands safely on the floor of the pit. While marveling at how so, Cage appears from his bag and the two reunite in tears of friendship. Cage tells Boji that he's been with him from the moment he fell off the window trying to escape, to when he wanted to bite into the poisoned meat. He tells him that he was sent to accompany Boji to meet the man that will make him strong, by Babin the snake handler, and the journey they are about to take leads them deeper into the underworld to meet this man. They head down toward their destination but Boji starts to smell gas which passes them out. Two men emerge from the smoke and take Boji and Cage on the back of their rides. They are taken to another kingdom, a kingdom of the underworld. When they come to, they meet the ruler of the kingdom, King Dessa, ranked second in the system. He starts to make fun of Boji for his shortcomings and the fact that his younger brother is king and not him. He asks about their intentions and Cage explains that they are there to see a man that can turn an ordinary man into a man of strength fit for a king. King Dessa admits that it's him they're looking for and that he needs to test the skill level of the person he is to train. One of his knights who transported Boji and Cage to the kingdom stands forward to test Boji. Boji is told to land a strike on the knight who happens to be a captain of the Order of the Underworld who are famous for their strength and relentlessness. Boji gives it his all, throwing his soft strikes at the guard who after realizing the situation, stands with his guard down. Dessa ridicules Boji one more time for his weakness before Cage defends him again. He tells Dessa that Boji's strength lies within his ability to dodge attacks precisely. Dessa then tells Boji to not let the guard him, and he doesn't. He dodges the attacks with precision and speed that impresses the knights in the room. And when the knight fighting Boji stops and admires his speed, they all look to Dessa for approval. Dessa mez as he is still not impressed. He says Boji can survive a battle but can't win it as he won't be able to get through his enemy's armor. Even after Cade's persuasion for Dessa to teach Boji, he refuses saying that he can't refine talent that's non-existent. The duo is ordered to be kicked out by King Dessa. Cage encourages Boji not to give up and that he will become strong if he works hard. Boji gets motivated to pick up a large rock with fail, and then a smaller rock with fail, still. He cries when he realizes that indeed he is absolutely feeble. Cage goes to comfort him. The knight whom Boji had sparred with tells them to take the letter of recommendation they had brought with them to the rightful person. 
When they ask who, they're told that it is the king's younger brother, Prince Despair. King Dessa was just fooling them to amuse himself and didn't let them know any sooner because he is in rivalry with Despair. The pair thank the knights and head to seek for Prince Despair and meet him. They introduce themselves and state the purpose of their visit. Despair asks for compensation for his services and after Cage pays, he invites them inside. He then reads Boji's hands and finds that Boji is weak and doesn't have even a stray vein of strength in his body. But still, he takes him under his wing to train him to his full potential. Boji and Cage head to bed after familiarizing themselves with the household and Boji wakes up early in the morning the next day and gets a bucket which he half fills with water before cleaning the entire house to the point where he could see his reflection on the floor. He then starts cooking breakfast, adding things that don't belong together at all in the same pot. The smell from the dish is so disgusting that it wakes both Cage and Despa up. They run downstairs to find Boji in the kitchen and are horrified at the fact that he cooked breakfast for them. Boji gets excited to see both of them and runs towards them, making them sit down before serving them their breakfast in a bowl. The breakfast looks gooey and disgusting and Cage and Despa are admittedly worried about consuming such muck. To their surprise however, Boji simply grabs a spoonful and puts the food in his mouth before giving out a joyous emotion. Watching this, both Despa and Cage get some confidence, and they end up turning the entire bowl in their mouth. To their horror however, the food tastes disgusting, and they are forced to throw up. Following that encounter, Despa goes in and spends all of his time in his study every day, reading about the giants, and finally calls upon Cage. He tells Cage that Boji is the son of giants, who are larger than mountains and can eat anything whole. He tells Cage that giants are impervious to any kind of stomach problems and can even digest the strongest of poisons. Cage looks confused but then suddenly realizes that Boji, having giant's blood, seems to have gotten the stomach of one, even if he has none of the other qualities. The Spao looks at him seriously and tells him that they cannot let him cook anymore, and Cage agrees, telling the Spao that he will cook food for them every day from now on. After that day, Cage takes up the responsibility to keep the house clean and cooks for all of them, which he ends up liking quite a bit. The Spao on the other hand begins Boji's training. He takes Boji inside of a giant room which is domed and lined up with weapons top to bottom and tells Cage to stay out. Boji walks with him, while Cage explains that this is the training room that he has had specially made and has every single weapon imaginable inside of this world. He tells Boji that every person needs a weapon, as a weapon is simply the extension of hand, a tool which helps them hone their skill making them even more deadly in any combat situations. He also comments that choosing the right weapon is the very first step, and oftentimes people end up messing up the very first step, after picking up a weapon which is not suited for them. He tells Boji that he already has a weapon in mind, but wants Boji to choose a weapon, as he wants to check Boji's intuition. Boji walks up to a short sword, but is immediately able to imagine himself struggling to even pick it up, and everyone around him laughing at his weakness. He then walks past a giant axe, which he believes is similar to the one his father used to have when he was in his prime. He then walks over to a smaller hatchet, thinking that maybe he can pick it up, but as soon as he tries to pick it up, he realizes that even the hatchet is a bit too heavy for him, and ends up stumbling down to the floor and almost hits himself with the hatchet, if not for Despair to save him at the last moment by catching the hatchet. He keeps walking, feeling a bit disappointed in himself, but suddenly, he spots a weapon on the wall and points at it. Despair smiles at him and tells him that he has excellent intuition, and their training starts. Ever since that day, Boji wakes up every day during the dawn, studies for two hours, before helping Cage clean. While Cage is cooking, Boji goes for a job in the mountains which are deemed to be filled with dangerous creatures. He practices his dodging abilities there on an entire flock of flesh-eating birds, knowing that if he gets hit once, it is death for him, as all of them will hold him down and end up swarming him. After coming back from his jog, he takes a cold bath and sits down for breakfast with both Cage and Despair. After breakfast is done, both Despair and Boji goes into the training room, and they stay in the room till the evening. When Boji emerges from the room every single day, exhausted to the level of unconsciousness, Cage, like a good friend, helps him immediately and takes him back to his bed, where he puts him to sleep properly. This has been going on for a couple of weeks now, and Cage wonders how strong Boji has become in these weeks. And one fine afternoon, when he was cleaning the house, he overhears a giant rumbling sound coming from inside the training room, and rushes in to see whether Boji is alright. He knocks at the door repeatedly, and Despair answers finally, opening the door only a crack, and asks him what does he want. 
Cage explains that he heard a huge commotion, so he came to check up on them, but Despat tells him that everything is fine, and that he should leave. Before leaving however, he is able to get a small glimpse of the inside of the room, where he spots Boji in front of a giant boulder, which has been split in half. Before he could get any more information however, Despat ends up closing the door on his face, denying him any more information, leaving him wondering about Boji's progress. Cage resumes his cleaning, but can't wrap his head around the possibility of Boji breaking that boulder into half, and thinks about the weapons that Boji can actually use to break that big of a boulder. His train of thought is interrupted by Boji, and Dispa however, who inform him that Boji has finally completed his entire training and has now learned all the secrets of the Dispa art. Boji, Cage and Dispa make their way to celebrate Boji's training completion. But as they head out the door, Cage notices that Boji has a sword by his side and asks about it. Boji swings it and impresses Cage, but when he takes it out of the sheath, Cage gets utterly disappointed by its slim and needle-like look. Dispa confronts Cage about his skepticism when he tells him that giving Boji a needle and calling it a sword is not going to help anyone. Cage apologizes to Boji and they head to their celebration. While they eat, three monsters whom are citizens of the underworld, approach the trio and start to pick a fight. They mock Dispa for his looks and he sends one flying with a punch which he instantly regrets. The monsters get back up and start to beat him up but Boji doesn't sit it out seeing that Dispa is ganged up on. He tries to defend but is easily pushed to the side. He gets back up and after dodging a few attacks, he lands a blow as soft as a daisy on the monster's chin. The monster, after a second, starts losing his balance and passes out, ruling Boji's punch and knockout. Boji continues to defend and finally draws his weapon, the needle sword and dodges a few attacks from the monster. In a flash of lightning, he defeats his opponent who falls to the ground screaming in pain. Cage panics that Boji killed the monster but Dispa checks his vitals and finds that he just passed out as before. Dispa then explains to Cage the science behind Boji's weak attacks that still yield great results. The placement and timing of the punch on that certain spot, and the stabbing of the needle without causing extensive damage to the brain or blood vessels. Cage celebrates Boji's victory, and the three head home afterward. On the way home, Dispa tells Boji and Cage to head on first as he needs to attend to something. He quickly runs around the corner to go meet the monsters whom Boji had just defeated and pays them for their participation in the fight. Later at night when Boji and Cage are sitting outside, Cage decides to finally tell Boji what has been going on in his castle, having been told by Bibin. After hearing all of this, Cage asks Boji what he will do. Boji remembering how Damaz had betrayed him, gets scared that Queen Hilling may do him in. He starts to take a walk and Cage follows him to ask him about his lack of courage. Boji then starts to punch himself and hitting his head on the ground in order to gain his courage back and set for home. Boji and Cage bid their bye to Dispa to return home. Dispa encourages Boji to love himself as he is and continue to be as courageous as he is. Knights of the Order of the Underworld arrive as the three men are still saying their goodbyes and offer to transport Boji back to his kingdom. Dispa explains to them that it is because criminals of the Underworld have infiltrated the kingdom and King Dessa has deployed the knights to take Boji home and capture the criminals. The knights explain who the criminals are and Cage continues to encourage Boji with his newfound strength through the Dispa arts. The knights escort Boji back to his kingdom and tell them about the things that have been happening in his absence. They tell him that the criminals that are trying to take over the kingdom were trapped in Dessa's dungeons but were somehow able to escape it, and are now ready to wreak havoc on the entire kingdom if nothing is done. Cage asks where Dispa is, as he was also supposed to accompany them, but the leader of the guards replies that Dispa wanted to ride on his own dear horse, but sadly, the horse never let anyone come near him, after Dispa left him under Dessa's care, and has turned completely fat. Dispa however is adamant, and is still riding the fat horse, making him extremely slow. Cage and Boji finally arrive at the kingdom to find a criminal that has left the castle to attack the civilians. The criminal is said to be one of the most dangerous as even Dispa said for the knight not to fight him until he arrives. The criminal known as Alkan, the sword of the underworld has cut up the people and is now to face the captain of the underworld order who is going against Dispa. When Boji wants to partake in the fight, the knight stops him as Dispa had said that Boji would be defeated by Alkan if he were to fight him. The knight tells Boji to head for the castle to help protect Queen Hilling, and Boji and Cage make their way to the castle in haste. Boji and Cage finally arrive at the castle where they see Hyling trying her best to heal Dorsh, while a green troll is beating up the two-headed snake senseless. Boji is horrified at this scene, and rushes towards the troll, before using his sword to instantly incapacitate him. 
He then quickly runs up to the snake and starts crying while clutching its dying body. Cage, however, quickly turns his head towards a very confused Hyling. Boji understands what he was trying to say and immediately begs Hyling to heal the snake, but Hyling sadly replies that she has no magical energy left, as all of it has already been used. Boji starts crying again, as the snake tells him not to worry about him, and that he lived a fulfilling life. Cage, however, is not going to let off this easily, and quickly pulls out a bunch of mana bottles from his ass, and gives it to Hyling. She is very surprised, as she doesn't even know her, but realizes that she doesn't have enough time, and starts drinking the entire liquid. She starts healing the snake, while drinking more and more of the bottles. Boji stands there cheating her on, but suddenly turns around to see that the toll has gotten up, and is trying to attack them. Boji quickly gets his sword out, and uses it to land a very accurate hit on the giant hammer that the ogre is carrying, shattering it in seconds. The ogre seems surprised by immediately tries to crush Boji with his feet, but Boji is not going to let anyone come near Hyling and again proceeds to land a very precise hit on his feet, incapacitating him completely. Cage quickly gets to work and ties the troll up completely, and points at Boji to show him that the two-headed snake seems to be fine now. Boji is delighted to see his friend alive, and rushes up to Hyling, hugging her tightly for the help she provided. Hyling hugs him back, and they start tearing up, before Hyling breaks off, and starts putting things in order. He walks up to Cage, and demands who he is. Cage responds that he is Boji's friend and has been with him for a long time now. Hyling looks at him suspiciously, but claims that she cannot sense any evil aura coming out of him, so for now she will let him stay with Boji, if he pledges his loyalty to Boji, and promises to always protect him no matter what even if it means giving up his own life to save Boji's. Cage seems to be taken aback by this, and frankly, seems to be pretty hurt. He stayed by Boji's side when no one else believed in him, when everyone left him for dead. He has already risked his life several times for Boji by now, and feels insulted by Hyling asking him to prove his loyalty to Boji. Cage gets mad and starts tearing up, shocking Hyling, but the snake informs her that Cage has been with Boji even before he left the kingdom on the journey and has been an essential part in saving his life multiple times. He also informs her that many times when Boji felt demotivated or lost, Cage was the one who kept him company, and made sure that he stayed on the right path. Hyling is embarrassed and rushes towards Cage, holding his hand, apologizing for the things she said, and thanking him for taking such good care of Boji when he had no other company. Cage gets flustered as he has never felt such love and appreciation before. They turn around and find Boji in front of the unconscious and half-dead bodies of the giant dogs that must have been involved in the battle with Hyling and her comrades. Cage walks up to him and realizes that Boji is sad that they are in such a bad state. Hyling, however, walks up to Boji and immediately starts healing the giant demon dogs while a delighted Boji hugs her out of compassion. The dogs wake up one by one and try to go near Hyling, but Dorsh blocks their way. The snake, however, comments that they harbor no ill will as of now and were being controlled earlier. Right now, according to the snake, they just want to show their gratitude to the person who saved their lives. They all seem to be happy, when suddenly the troll wakes up and breaks his ropes, walking towards Boji. Cage quickly hands Boji his sword, but right before reaching Boji, the troll stops, and bows down in front of him. He accepts Boji as his master, and the superior fighter amongst them, and wants to pledge his life to him. Boji tells Cage that he doesn't want him to do anything, but just be friends with them, which Cage agrees to, but Hyling stops them, explaining that Boji someday will become a king, and he cannot make everyone his friend. Boji realizes that and walks up to the troll, knighting him and accepting his allegiance towards him. Hyling and Dorsh talk to the snake, who reveals that he can feel a bunch of forces coming up from the underworld, and before someone seizes control on these demon dogs, it is the best to leave them back into the underworld. Hyling looks at him surprised, as she thought the underworld was just a fairy tale. But the snake replies that Boji has been through the underworld before and has survived its trials already. Hyling looks at Boji and asks if he could leave these beasts back to the underworld, while she tries to seize some sense of control over the fallen kingdom. Boji looks at her worryingly, but the snake and Dorsh both reply that no matter what, they will take care of Hyling, and nothing and no one is going to hurt her. This reassures Boji, and he alongside the troll, and the other beast dogs start traveling towards the entrance of the underworld as guided by the snake. They reach a cave, and when they look into it, they see thousands of stairs descending down, making Cage feel sick. 
Boji also looks a bit shook after watching how many stairs they will have to descend while fighting beasts of the underworld to reach the ground. But the troll simply picks both Cage and Boji up and jumps down from the platform. Both Boji and Cage are super scared, but they finally land at the ground safely with a huge thud. They both look around and are surprised to see a bunch of people already standing there. It seems like there was a massive fight very recently, as there are a bunch of unconscious bodies of the Knights of the Underworld. And as they look around, they spot King Dessa, which surprises them, but then Boji's heart drops as he spots them as standing in his way. Boji starts hyperventilating and goes through a full-fledged panic attack after seeing Demaz, who pushed him into the underworld to die, betraying his blind trust completely. Cage touches him and feels the storm of emotions brewing inside of Boji, going completely wild, and realizes that if he doesn't snap him out of it, he will end up spiraling into bigger problems. Cage shouts at Demaz to look at them at the top of his lungs, and tells him to be ashamed for what he did to Boji. Demaz gets one look at them, and instantly his eyes are filled with water. He falls to his knees, and starts crying like a baby, apologizing for what he did to Boji. He tells Boji that he cared for Boji more than anyone can ever imagine, and was forced to do this because of the orders he got, which he can't go against as per her pledge. He however is so ridden with guilt, that he tells Boji that as an apology, he is going to take his own life, and jumps off the stairs, falling headfirst on the ground. Boji and Cage both are both shocked at this, and are horrified to see Demaz's lifeless body on the floor, fearing the worst. Demaz's apprentice rushes up to him, scared for his life, but as soon as he reaches him, Demaz gets back up, and starts cursing himself for having such an overtrained body as he can't even end his own life. The apprentice however looks at him with anger, and tells him that he is selfish to do what he did, and if he really wants to make amends, his first priority should be the safety of Boji. Demaz looks at him, and agrees with him completely, taking up arms once again to defend Boji. Dessa looks at all this interestingly, and tells his guards to seize the troll immediately, as he is a prisoner from their cell. They all rush towards the troll, while Boji and Cage try to dissolve the situation, but it is too late, as the troll simply swats them away like flies. One of the guards slashes at him from behind, and when the troll tries punching him, another guard blocks his attack, while some more guards surround him, and try to attack him. Their attacks fail because both Demaz and Hokuro quickly throw themselves at the front lines and block their attacks, pushing them backwards. Boji and Cage quickly jump off the troll and try to resolve the situation peacefully again. But Dessa gets tired of all this foolishness and creates a lightning blast that shocks the troll to the core, knocking him out. Demaz and Hokuro immediately stand in front of Boji and tell Dessa that they won't let him hurt Boji. Dessa looks at them and responds that he has no intentions of hurting anyone apart from one specific person. This confuses them all, and Demaz asks who is he talking about. Person who really is Dessa looks at him, and tells him that he is after the mastermind of this whole ordeal. The person who suggested King Boss to reincarnate into his younger son's body, and start ruling again. The Ed all these prisoners, and is controlling everything, Moranjo. Demaz is completely shocked at this, and Boji has no words, as up till now, he thought that his father was dead. Upon hearing the name of Moranjo, suddenly a memory from his past, which he had long suppressed resurfaces in his mind, and he remembers a time when he was really young. He was being covered by his mother while the surrounding areas were all destroyed. He remembers hearing the name Moranjo from his mother's mouth when she told her to spare Boji and leave him alone. He remembers how he cried when those beastly arrows struck his poor mother on the back, again and again and again, while she hopelessly tried to shield Boji from them. He remembers how she looked at him with the same smile that she always had, and reassured him softly, telling him that everything will be fine, and that she will protect him no matter what. He remembers hearing another volley of arrows falling upon her on the orders of Moranjo, and he remembers the sickening sound the arrows made when they were driven deep inside his mother, as she lays there bleeding. Finally, he remembers his mother taking her last breath, just as he spots Moranjo, falling to the ground, because his comrades betrayed her, and shot an arrow in her as well. Cage snaps him out of this stupor, and he realizes that tears are falling from his face, as he quickly wipes them off. He looks at Dessa, and signals to him that he is not going to come in his way of defeating Moranjo, and Dessa tells him that even if he doesn't, his father, King Boss will, because he is really close to Moranjo, in both heart and soul. He then turns towards his soldiers, and commands them to escort the troll back to the underworld prison. But Boji immediately takes out his sword, ready to defend his fallen friend. 
Bessa looks at him and tells him that the troll has committed crimes against him, as he was supposed to be in his army. But when they were fighting against other trolls, the soldiers in Dessa's army ended up torturing the babies of these trolls before killing them, leading to Gigan, the troll losing his mind one day and killing a bunch of people from his own army, only to be stopped by Dessa's younger brother and Despa's older brother, who used to be the leader of the Knights of the Underworld, before becoming a criminal himself. Just then, Gigan comes back to consciousness and has one look at Dessa before losing his cool and running towards him in full force. Dessa, however, is ready for him and uses another lightning blast, but to everyone's surprise, Boji intercepts the blast and dispels it immediately before standing in front of Gigan again. Dessa thinks that Boji wants to fight and gets ready for a battle again but he quickly throws away his sword, trying to communicate that he wants peace. Dessa is unable to understand him, but Cage thankfully explains what Boji is saying. Dessa slams his mace on the ground and thinks before telling everyone in his army that they are going back to the underworld for now, delighting Boji. Dessa, however, tells Gigan that he is also coming back to the underworld with them. Boji quickly grabs his sword once again, but Dessa simply tells him that he doesn't want to fight right now and but he is going to take Gigan back as he wants Gigan to be in his army once again, to make amends to whatever went wrong between them. Before anyone could speak however, the beast dogs arrive from above. Boji tries to stop them, but they don't listen to him and attack Dessa. Boji closes his eyes, scared that Dessa will kill them, but to his surprise, he notices that Dessa let them attack him, and is bleeding. Dessa looks at the beasts and calmly tells them to let them go, and to everyone's surprise, the beasts leave him. He tells them that they also belong in the underworld and are coming with him. He starts walking and both Gigan and the beast also follow behind him. But Gigan looks at Boji one last time, before telling him that he will always have allegiance to Boji and that he is thankful for all that Boji did for him. They all go through the gate and leave for the underworld, and suddenly, Demaz and Hokuro arrive in front of Boji, and they again fall to the ground, bowing in front of Boji, apologizing to him while tears roll down their cheeks. Boji however starts getting a panic attack once again, and turns around to face in the opposite direction. Cage walks up to Boji, and asks him whether he could forgive them. Boji turns around to see Damaz, and memories of Damaz flash in front of his eyes. Good memories when he used to train him, and then the memories of him pushing him into the abyss to die. He turns around and starts running up the stairs at full pace, while tears roll down his cheeks. Boji runs upstairs and outside in the open, rushing towards the palace to make sure Hyling and the others are safe. On the way however, he and Cage both spot a man unconscious on the floor, and they go to have a look. They are surprised to see that the man is Apias, one of the great fours, whose weapon of choice is a spear, and who helped Boji multiple times. They decides to take him back to safety, but both Cage and Boji are physically weak and are unable to drag him even a bit. Thankfully, however, he wakes up by himself and is shocked to see Boji in front of him. He seems to be happy, but his happiness soon turns into sorrow as he tells Boji to leave the kingdom and run away as soon as possible. He tells Boji that Moranjo is planning to kill Hyla, and that she wants to destroy the entire kingdom, just because she doesn't want to get separated from King Boss. Boji is horrified at this, and looks at Apias, hoping that he will help them, but Apias looks at him sadly, before telling him that he owes her a very big debt, and cannot change sides. He then gets up, and tells Boji that he cannot let him go further, because Boji is going to meddle with Moranjo's horrifying plans. Before he could do anything however, he feels a giant aura coming out of Boji, and after sensing the immense power that Boji has seemed to grow, he simply sits back down and smiles at him, before telling him to go and do as he seems fit. Boji bids him farewell and runs forward in the direction of the castle when he suddenly spots Aoken, who runs past him towards the castle as well. He follows him to the castle where he spots two more criminals sitting on the throne. But as soon as Aoken arrives, one of them gets very scared and starts backing off. He runs away quickly and starts scaling the wall while Aoken fights against the other criminal. Boji runs up the wall and blocks the criminal's path and spots that Aoken has defeated his adversary and is chasing this fat guy now. The fatty tries to take Boji on, but he also senses immense power coming from him and gets scared of him. He then tries to play mind games and runs up to Boji, begging him to save him from Aoken. But as soon as he reaches near Boji, Ace spits a bunch of poison on his face before laughing maniacally, thinking that he killed Boji. Boji however has no problem dealing with this, as he is the descendants of giants who have no problems with consuming poison. But suddenly, Aoken also arrives behind the fatty. 
Fatty jumps off the platform and starts running again, but Boji gives chase and with one swift attack knocks him to the floor before tying him up with a rope. Aoken however is not done with Fatty and walks up to him with his sword unsheathed, ready to kill him, but Boji stands his ground and doesn't budge, ready to defend Fatty, even if it meant fighting the infamous Aoken. They both circle around each other before Aoken starts throwing small stones imbued with his curse magic at Boji. But to his surprise, Boji is able to dodge each and every single one of them without any troubles. Aoken throws a tiny rock again, and this time instead of dodging, Boji simply lands a very precise hit, and to their surprise, breaks the small stone in half before showing it to Aoken. Aoken seems to be very surprised at his abilities and gets more cautious around him. Aoken finally decides to use his sword and attacks Boji, who simply dodges his attack before attacking Aoken himself. Aoken blocks the attack but Boji uses that momentum to come in for a second strike, and this time, he lands a very precise blow on his breastplate. Cage expected Aoken to fall, but to his surprise, he is still up and running. He asks Boji whether he messed up the location of the attack, but Boji shakes his head, indicating that the attack landed on the correct position. Aoken decides to go on the offensive and starts unleashing a flurry of attacks at Boji, who skillfully dodges every single one of them, thanks to his rigorous training. He dodges all of his attacks and then goes in for another thrust, hitting him just below the chest with pinpoint accuracy. But again it has no effect on Aoken, confusing both Boji and Cage. Aoken realizes that Boji's swordsmanship is not good enough to take him down, as he gets some confidence to attack more aggressively. Boji takes his position, while Aoken attacks him with all his weight behind the sword. Boji, however, simply touches the tip of his sword to Aoken's sword, and to Aoken's surprise, he completely shatters his sword. Cage is really happy thinking that the fight has ended, and starts celebrating, but to his absolute horror, Aoken simply reattaches his sword with his dark arts. He laughs at Boji and attacks him again, but once again, Boji skillfully dodges his attack and strikes him on the chest to no avail. Aoken pursues him and throws a bunch of stones imbued with dark magic at him again, but Boji is the master of dodging and simply dodges all of his attacks with ease before running up to him and striking him on the neck. Aoken slashes in the air, but Boji again dodges his blows and falls back. Aoken pursues him with a flailing strike, but Boji again thrusts with his pinpoint precision. Aoken has now completely stopped dodging Boji's blows, as he knows they are not strong enough to do him any real damage. Boji seems to be getting tired, as Aoken keeps pursuing him, driving him on his back foot, while he breathes heavily out of exhaustion. Cage runs up to him, and tells him to run away as he cannot defeat Aoken like this. Boji however refuses to run and stands his ground. Moranjo smirks at them, and tells Cage that Boji will get himself killed, as he can never defeat Aoken. When Cage inquires more about it, she reveals that Aoken is an immortal monster now, and cannot be defeated like this. Cage is horrified at learning this, and runs up to Boji, telling him to run away to the ramparts, and catch his breath, because if this keeps going on, Boji will get exhausted, and his movements will slow down. If his moments slow down, he will have trouble dodging Aoken's attack, and being able to dodge his attacks was the only thing that kept Boji alive in this fight. Boji heeds his advice and runs up to the ramparts surprising Aoken, but Aoken knows how Boji is as a person now, and simply runs towards Fatty, who is bound up in the corner. As he expected, Boji immediately jumps down in front of him, ready to defend Fatty, even though he is a criminal, who not too long ago tried killing him. Through a hard-fought battle, Boji is completely exhausted but still continues fighting by tying his hand to the sword but Aoken kept pushing him and all he could do is dodge the attacks. Cage tries to assist him but Boji tells him to stop. At first he doesn't listen and proceeds to move forward but Boji shouts at him to stop again forcing him to drop his sword. Aoken doesn't give a damn about all this and raises his sword for the final blow when a spear falls from the sky with lightning on top of it pushing Aoken back. Suddenly, Despair and the captain both arrive, glad to find Boji alive while Aoken gets up once again. Moranjo starts making fun of Boji which makes Cage angry and he almost breaks the mirror, but stops at the last moment before setting it down once again. Aoken turns his attention towards Despair, and the captain while Despair quickly contacts his brother who immediately sends another round of lightning on top of Aoken. But to their surprise, Aoken simply uses his sword as a lightning rod and conducts the electricity before sending it back to the ground. 
This makes him even angrier and he starts making his way towards Dessa. But the captain decides to intercept him and attacks with his dagger. Palkin is much faster and dodges the attack before breaking his sword and swiftly stabbing him in the chest. The captain falls to the ground, and Alkin turns his attention towards Boji, but Despa shouts at him to draw his attention. Alkin decides to finish Despa as well, and starts moving towards him while Despa is scared out of his mind. Alkin decides to attack but Despa is a genius who expected this and blocks the attack, and asks Dessa to blast them both with lightning. But before anything could happen, Alkin simply stabs him in the chest, and even Despa falls over to the ground. This enraged Boji so much that he rushes towards the steel-clad monster and dodges his blow before delivering a 100 sword strikes in less than a second which breaks Alkin's sword as well as his visor while he falls over to the ground. Cage tells Boji that Despa is still alive but gravely wounded as Alkin regenerates once again and puts on his visor to stand on his feet again. He attacks Boji once again and the tired young prince falls to the ground defenseless. Cage distracts Alkin for a brief moment which gives Boji the chance to jump on his back but this spells disaster as Alkin simply stabs Boji in the leg through his own body before picking up his sword to deliver the final blow. Just before he could do that, Cage tries his one final attempt at trying to save him and swallows Alkin whole. For a moment they both think that they might have won, but this small victory is quickly turned into horror as Alkin stabs his way out of Cage's body, completely shocking them. He steps over an unconscious Cage and moves to finish Boji as he cries uncontrollably. The Spa and the Captain are too injured to do anything and can only watch as he raises his sword for one last time and stabs Boji in the back. The two-headed snake arrives at the spot and tries to see whether they can be saved but realizes that Hyling has no more mana left to revive any of them. Alkin starts walking towards them to finish them off as he has seen them suffer enough, but the snake is ready to defend them with his life. The snake uses its tail to try and bass Alkin but he smoothly dodges before jumping in the air, and pinning the tail down with his sword causing immense pain to the snake. He wants to see the snake suffer so he starts eating its tail before jumping in the air to finish the defenseless beast off. Thankfully, the bin arrives at the very last moment and slashed Alkin in half, saving the snake's life. Dorsh and the others also arrive at the spot, only to see the horrific sight of Baji and the others while Alkin regenerates himself once more. The bin tells them that this monster is immortal so all they can do is try to seal him away, while Hokuro picks Boji's limp body up, trying to stop the bleeding. Demaz decides that he will take Alkan on and moves towards him with his sword drawn, and after getting in position, he immediately attacks with a massive slash. Alkan blocks the blow with his arm and retaliates, but Demaz dodges by a hair's margin. Alkan regenerates his arm so Demaz decides to focus on destroying his sword and starts swinging wildly. To his absolute surprise, when Alkan's sword develops a small crack, it immediately gets joined once again by the black goo again. Demaz decides that he still is the superior swordsman and can defeat this Walmart Venom before attacking him with a strong strike which knocks Alkin to the ground. He moves towards his fallen enemy once again but Alkin uses his magic blast to stop Demaz on his tracks which surprises everyone as they don't know what happened. Alkin walks towards the incapacitated Demaz, but Bibin appears just in time and shatters Alkin's sword in half before telling Demaz that Alkin can paralyze the opponent with his invisible magic blast. Finally, both Dorsh and Apias also join the fight to make it a 4-on-1 and get ready to gangbang him as Dorsh attacks him head on forcing him back while Damaz cuts him deep and with the help of Bibin and Apias, Dorsh is able to punch him to the ground before hopping on top of him. He starts smashing his face into the ground, but no matter what he does, Alkin keeps regenerating and is able to push him away before getting back up again. This time he looks different and as they surround him, he swiftly attacks Bibin before paralyzing him and does the same to Apias as well which forces Dorsh and Damaz both attack together but suffer the same fate and get completely paralyzed. Alkin looks at them as they stand together once again as they know if they lose this fight, everyone will die. After a long fight they have torn apart his body into pieces and all of them are holding some part of it, while Apices is trying to hold off his body. They all seem to be extremely tired and hurt, but their willpower is still strong. Alkan however is a monster among monsters, and simply uses his black tar to get his body parts back while the three saviors of humanity fall to the ground, leaving Apias holding his body but not for long, as Alkan simply stabs Apias through himself, knocking him down as well. He gets ready to finish them off but Hokuro decides to man up and shoots Alkan in the back while Damaz tells him to run away, but it's too late as Alkan simply stabs Hokuro in the gut as well. 
Hauken walks up to Maranjo and kneels down on one knee, while the people he massacred lay on the ground bleeding slowly to death. The Spau realizes that the bleeding isn't stopping even by his secret technique, but notices that Cage has healed himself somehow. He tells Cage to secretly go near the captain as he has a very strong blood-stopping technique which they must use on Boji, otherwise he'll die. Cage starts sneaking away while Alken turns around to see a bunch of snakes rushing to the scene. He goes to inspect what's happening. While the captain has already stopped his bleeding but is pretending to be unconscious in hopes of stealing Alken's sword. As the monster walks by him, he immediately gets up, but Alken stabs him in the chest once again to Cage absolute horror. He then moves towards Cage, but even after being so badly hurt, Boji stands in between to protect his friend with his very life. Alken charges at Boji but stops when an earthquake is felt and they turn around to see Boss and Dadia's body standing there with his massive club. Without saying a word, Boss smacks Boji in the head with his club, while Cage gets so overwhelmed by rage that he runs up Boss's head and starts hitting him. Boss easily picks Cage and throws him away before claiming that all these people should die quickly and hits them with his club all at once. The two-headed snake comes to their defense, but is nothing against Boss who smacks him away. Boss then walks towards the spa who tries to call his brother to deliver some lightning, but Boss tells him that it has no effect on him. Just when Despa thought everyone will die, Boss surprises him by putting his club down and using a massive heal spell on every single person in the area creating a garden around them and healing them to full strength. Cage is beyond happy to see Boji stand again, while he shows Cage that he has regained his full strength as well. Boji, Cage and Despa all celebrate the fact that they are alive but realize that Alken, the real threat, is still around. Boji gets ready for round two but a tired boss tells him to back off as he is going to deal with this monster himself. He regains his breath before walking towards Alken but as soon as he attacks, Alken dodges and tries to slash Boss's arms, only for his sword to crack. Everyone is shocked at this, while Boss tells him that his bitch-ass sword can't hurt him. Despau realizes that Boss has a giant strength in that small body which makes him very concentrated. Alken gets taken aback but again attacks with a hundred thrusts in quick successions. But they barely put a scratch on Boss, while a single swing of his club blasts Alken in half. He tries to regenerate but Boss uses his club like a blender and goes to town on his broken body, trying to make a guacamole out of it but fails as he regenerates again. Boss decides to end this fight once and for all and bludgeons Alken down once again to small bits before picking all the pieces of his armor and crushing them into a small ball but puts it down and starts looking for something in the ground. Cage and the others spot Alken regenerating again while Boss finds a huge boulder from the ground but puts it down before going ham on Alken once again, destroying him into small pieces and then crushing it into a ball but this time he smashes a hole in the boulder, and then stuffs Alken inside of it and covers it with pieces of rocks. Boss then turns around and everyone realizes that he is not on their side, but Boji takes up his sword and gets ready for a final fight. Boss walks past Boji and goes towards Maranjo and after having a few words with her, he turns around to face everyone else. He tells them that if they all pledge allegiance to them, he will show mercy and forgive them, but if they try to fight him for data, they will all die. He then swings his club in the air which causes a huge gust of wind, scaring everyone of his strength. Boji stands there unwavered in his resolve as he remembers how data used to help him when other kids bullet him. He takes a fighting stance against Boss while he asks the others which side they are on. Without a single second's delay, Demaz agrees to be on Boji's side, and soon everyone else also stands in front of Boji with their weapons drawn in order to protect him. Boji gets extremely happy but walks in front of them once again. They all tell him to back off as they will protect him but Despa tells them that Boji is much stronger than all of them, and can handle himself. Demaz decides that he can't let Boji get hurt and immediately charges at Boss but Boji immediately attacks him from behind and knocks him out shocking everyone else. He then walks towards Boss and gets ready for a fight. In his eyes he is still fighting the giant of a man that is his father, and while thinking like that he is able to predict his movements and dodges the attacks seamlessly while also attacking the club's weak points in order to pick it apart, Boss tries to crush him with a downward swing. But Boji dodges and simply hits the club so many times at weak points that it shatters while Boji rushes in for the final blow and hurts Boss. Everyone is shocked to see this but Boss is still standing. Boji immediately pushes on and starts attacking a tired Boss again and again with such incredible speed and precision that the great invincible King Boss is feeling powerless against the small and weak Prince Boji. Boss falls on the ground and starts crawling towards Maranjo, apologizing for not being able to help her before he tries to break the mirror, 
but Boji immediately attacks and stops Boss from doing so. He starts crying on the floor begging Moranjo to give Data his body back, as he never wanted to be reborn in this world. Moranjo finally realizes the real wishes of Boss and asks Boji to break the mirror as this will give Data his body back. Boji walks towards the mirror, but Apias stands in front of him and begs him to not do anything, but Moranjo tells him to step aside, and with a swift strike, Boji breaks the mirror, releasing the souls of both Moranjo and his father from their jail cells. Their souls fly into the sky towards heaven, but suddenly a huge demon appears beside them and jumps towards their souls. The captain immediately lunges to stop it but is not fast enough, and Moranjo ends up sacrificing herself so that Boss can ascend into heaven. Everyone watches in horror as the giant demon laughs in the sky, while Boji immediately brings a crossbow to Hokuro and tells him to shoot the demon. Hokuro shoots a bolt at it but the demon flicks it away before laughing but Despa calls his brother and asks for a lightning bolt which hits the demon square on the head and it falls off to the ground. The captain immediately lunges forward with his poleaxe and chops off the demon's head. The spa picks the head up and tells the demon that his head will only be returned if he fulfills one of their wishes and the demon agrees. The spa was always looking for this moment as he wanted to free his brother Alkin from this suffering so he can die peacefully and tries to make his wish but Data wakes up and before the spa can say anything, he asks the demon to bring Moranjo back to life. The demon claims that the wish has been granted and both Data and Boji are sent to get Moranjo. Data carries Moranjo out in the open while the spa screams that his wish was taken away. The demon simply laughs and disappears immediately, and the frozen body of Moranjo appears in the air, and falls to the ground. The spa falls to his knees while Data runs to check on Moranjo, and hugs her immediately. He claims that her voice was the only thing that was keeping him alive inside of Boss's body, and tells her that he wants to marry her. Everyone is shocked beyond belief and while Moranjo cries her heart out, Data claims that Moranjo is her wife and no one will lay a hand on her. The captain however looks at a destroyed Despa and runs towards Moranjo to finish her off but Apias and Bibin immediately intercept him. Data tells them to stop while he apologizes to Despa and the captain claiming that he will try to make whatever reparations he can to them. Despa thinks about his brother and finally gets up 